Regarded as the saddest episode of the original series, My Home as Earth truly lives up to its reputation, even to this day. One day, an invisible spaceship begins attacking people who are prepared to attend a peace conference in Japan. The science patrol manages to find the culprit to the attacks and destroys their ship. However, this is no ordinary alien that has come to Earth. The culprit, an alien monster named Jamila, was once a human who was left to die after his ship malfunctioned, and the people who sent him into space covered up his fate in order to preserve the people's faith in science. Now it's up to the science patrol to stop the beast, but are they willing to take down a creature that was once human? While technically, this episode parallels Jiras's with a Frankenstein's monster meets old yeller tone, but in Jamila's case, the message is a bit stronger here since the monster in question was once human, to which we get to see the science patrol, or in this case mostly Ide, question his values when it comes to taking down one of his own kind for the sake of protecting people. And speaking of Ide, characterization shines particularly on him, as he becomes the center of the episode's drama after the episode's second half in. Which is pretty surprising given that in almost every other episode he's the goofball, whereas here he's so serious. Which is a little jarring, but is all the greater welcoming here since it reinstates the seriousness of this episode's morals. Effects on the other hand are pretty average, nothing too special, but at the same time it doesn't need to be in this case. The moral counts more so here. As for Jamila, he is a great monster. Tragic, crazed, and most important of all, suffering through it all just like Cujo, the Fly, Carpenters, and Old Yeller. And like them, his eventual demise is actually pretty hard to watch, even after all these years. If I had one small request though, it might be to add some drama of having him in a slight conflict with himself, like the episode briefly implied at one moment. Not unlike Powered because WE NEVER SPEAK OF THAT SHOW EVER! And Jamila's death itself is kinda needlessly cruel. Unlike Yeller, where it was quick and painless, Jamila's is anything but that. Which is pretty harsh of Ultraman, considering he knows what Jamila's weak to. But these are just minor nitpicks. Everything else about him is befitting of a tragic beast. And when that said, I definitely recommend everyone to give this episode a watch at least once. If you want to see just how Ultraman handles drama and tragedy, this is one of their best. Swatch!